You're listening to DraftKings Network. Folks, listen up. U.S. Cellular wants to help everyone get the gift of connection this holiday season. Already a customer? This applies to you too. Because right now, new and current customers can get any phone, and I mean any phone, for free. Yes, free. Sounds like it's time to make the switch. Spread the holiday cheer far and wide this season with a new phone. Everyone can get the gift of connection at U.S. Cellular. Get any phone free today. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Visit uscellular.com for details. This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugats Podcast. This has been one of the craziest, most tiring weeks this show has <laughs> ever had uh, behind the scenes. I will explain some of that to you going forward. We have a lot we are stuffing into today's show. At the end of the show, if you are interested in UFC, Tony's got something for you. If you're interested in hockey, Roy's got something for you. If you're interested in intellectual meanderings that are self-involved and navel- I got something for you. navel gazing, Pablo Torre <laughs> oh. will have something for you. What Chris Cody has for you is that he thinks as our best athlete, claiming to be our best athlete, even though Jessica, Tony, and Juju object. Mm-hmm. And someone here was actually a college athlete that you just ignore every time this conversation Thank you. happens. Well, yeah. Yeah, pole vault doesn't mm-hmm. count. Uh, my, Sounds like we need to have a decathlon. My, my bad. Ricky Williams also <laughs> fancies him himself uh, our best athlete. How about lacrosse? I mean, I played a college sport at a high level. I mean, top 10 in the country in scoring one year. Why don't we just let Ricky have the stars tell us which one of us is a better athlete? Mm. Uh, Thank you for saying that. Uh, Don't you think as you uh, make fun of Ricky that the universe is out to get you? No, you just did. And you think the universe is out to get you. Ricky (laughs) thinks the universe is aligned with him. You think it's out to get you. Well, no, I know the universe is out to get me and I need to find a way to make amends, but I don't know how to do that. Yesterday I woke up and I had this horrible neck pain because I'm getting old, but I couldn't turn my head like most of the day. So I have on one of those like patches that's supposed to help with that pain. And then I fell asleep with one of those patches on and a hoodie on, but I was sleeping with a wedge pillow. I don't know if you know what a wedge pillow is. It's like an angled pillow because that's supposed to help with my back pain, right? So as the night is going on, I'm sliding down the wedge pillow, not realizing it, but my hoodie is staying up. So my hoodie was strangling me in the middle Ooh. of the night, and I woke up choking, gasping for air. And I was like, oh, 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 oh. And even now, my throat is still, I feel like someone has their hands around my throat. And I realize I almost lost my life yesterday as a result of my neck and my hoodie and the just general yeah, universe and, out and, to get me, and I don't know what to do about well, it. Well, this may be why Make amends. I overlook you in general as one of our finest athletes, given that you spent last night fighting with your sleep. Great athletes are often, you know, <laughs> yep. the uh, you know victims of assassination attempts. Breach. Just wow. usually not by the hands Dark of the turn. universe. It sounds like you told your body last night, not yeah. today. Mm-hmm. And no, I told the, the universe do. not today, but I also want to make amends because I don't want the universe to keep coming because I'm not always going to be on my A game like I have been the last two days. Like one day they're going to catch me sleeping. Last night the universe actually did try to catch me sleeping, but it didn't work. I woke up. But what if I don't? Uh, Chris Cody thinks uh, that he is tough. The re- One of the reasons, uh, Jessica, how tired are you? We've just had a lot, uh, you know, Christmas parties and watch parties and stuff away from here. I, I actually asked Amin when I saw him today, are you sad or tired? As if there weren't any other choices, because it was my greeting to him. Uh, uh, Chris Cody is so tired that he's bragging to me. He's saying, you're not going to believe how I toughed it out. Wednesday night, I was actually thinking, to myself, I'm so tired, and this is the highest form of tired that there is in the universe, that I don't think I can go to bowling. That's Ooh. what he was thinking to himself. Wow. However, I got that feeling, you know, when you're driving and you start yeah. to get that sleepy feeling, mm-hmm. and you're like, yep, I start singing. I put the radio on and I start Keep yourself audibly up. actually right. singing yeah. with the words. Yeah. You toughed it out, though? I mean, I went to bowling. Oh, uh, during wow. the Christmas party, uh, <laughs> I, in a chair across from Lindsay, fell asleep. During the Christmas party, uh, you toughed it out and you went bowling. Yes, I did. How about me? Huh? Wow. You just did. How Thank about you, really? me? While picking a booger out of your nose. That's yeah. what you just did on television. That was a scratch. We can run the replay on that. Mm-hmm. All right, we will. It's a difference. A scratch, isn't yeah. It, it yeah. didn't look. I'll do it like again. It. Jessica, how tired? <laughs> how t- how tired are you? 
I'm very tired. I, there's also something in my eye, so uh, I can't really. I, I'm playing hurt right now. I fell asleep last night watching the uh, na- women's volleyball national championship ooh. semifinals. Woke up at 3 a.m. with all my lights on, TV still on. I, I had no idea what time it was, and then I looked at my phone and I saw the score of Thursday night football, yeah. and I chuckled as I fell back. Who's asleep. Nebraska playing? Because I watched the first Texas. Okay. Yeah, Texas beat Wisconsin last night. Wow. It was a, it was a good, really good night of volleyball, if I do say so myself. And you mentioned the football. I mean, you could argue that wasn't a good night. You fell asleep watching it. Because uh, it was like the second match started at like yeah. 9 o'clock. That's yeah. way past my bedtime. I don't like Jesus. that. Jesus. Come on. <laughs> what don't you like? I don't like the late starts. Yeah. It was, a, it was like a double schedule. header, like back to back. And Pitt got swept. So yeah. it, it actually started earlier than I thought it was going to start. But still, past my bedtime. You mentioned the football, and what I will tell the audience, if you want uh, more comprehensive football coverage, God Bless Football has you covered. We're not going to talk about this here beyond me just saying, I don't think in the history of doing this I've ever accused a professional football team of quitting. I I always say, look, that's a really hard sport. Look at what they're doing. I know sometimes it looks like when Denver's losing 70-20 to that they're quitting, but they're not actually quitting. No, last night the Chargers quit. Uh, it's the first time I've ever wow. I've ever accused Congratulations. a professional football team of quitting. Stu Gantz came in here today and said, I gave Austin Eckler the week off. And I'm like, did it include the game last night? <laughs> because uh, he's not on God Bless Football this week because that has to stink to be Austin Eckler or any of the Chargers today. The schedule changed a little bit for Eckler. He wanted to come on today, and me and Billy just told him take a bye week from God Bless Football. He deserves it. I mean, that was a rough night last night. It was. That team quit on their coach, and I do wonder if he will still be their head coach by the end of today. Uh, let's hear from Brandon Staley himself. you expect to be the coach here tomorrow? I don't know that. Do you, do you think you should be? Yes. Why? I know that what I've done here for three years, and I know what I put into this, and um, you know, I know that we're capable of going. Uh, I know the type of coach that I am. I believe in myself. Um, but again, this isn't about me. This is about a, a group that's hurting in there. We got to get some rest and we got to get ready for Buffalo. Oh, no, it's over for Staley. And we've chronicled <laughs> it here in audio. Uh, I believe we've been better than just about anyone outside of the LA market covering the Chargers here <laughs> through audio. Let's hear some of the descent of Brandon Staley this year. Yeah, we just lost a game in overtime, Jeff. So, how do you think the mood is? How do you think the mood is? Jeff uh, is my friend, Jeff Miller from the LA Times, and (laughs) the other writers, because he's uh, the elder statesman, expect him to ask the questions that bother the coach. So let's hear some more Staley sound. I have full confidence, like I've told you, and like I've told you from the beginning, I have full confidence in our way of playing. Full confidence in myself as the play caller, in the way that we teach, in the way that we scheme. Full confidence in that. We got to bring this group together and do it consistently, okay? And that's where it's at. So... You can stop asking that question, okay? I'm going to be calling the defenses, okay? So we're clear. So you don't have to ask that again. So he called that defense last night. Mm-hmm. Stugatz, what can people get on God Bless Football? You and Billy have already done it. You rushed in to do it after Billy was attacked by his wedge pillow and survived it somehow. Yeah, fending off the universe. Um, we have Quincy Williams on from the Jets. They play the Dolphins this weekend. We have Chris Sims, Mike Golick, the picks, all that stuff. But my favorite guest this week is Peter King. Billy loves Peter King, and Peter King loves Billy Gill. They share a passion for doing dishes. <laughs> That's all I got for you, man. That's true. We have arranged. Uh, he said any time, and then we said next week, and he said, oh, I can't next week. But we've arranged in January to do a podcast together where we're both washing dishes at the same time. So pretty excited. Sounds like terrible audio, if you ask me. Do you ever talk to any of your friends on the phone while they're doing the dishes? It's just like, ch- cling, cling, ch- 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 yeah. water. Worst. Do any of you put it on the poll, I please? I should be a Foley artist. Juju at Lebitard Show. Put it on the poll. Uh, do you go to the bathroom while talking to your friends on the phone? Every day. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or, All the time. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You just make sure you do it when they're in a long run. You mute. Yep. You're good to go. On FaceTime, too. Do any of you not mute? You FaceTime your friends from the bathroom. Yeah, I'll be talking on the phone and then on FaceTime, and then I'll just kind of put it upside down. Keep it down. shoulder yeah. up. Yeah. No, sh- upside down. I don't know how on to the mute. Counter. Yeah. Why are you FaceTiming then? <laughs> because I'm having a conversation, but I have to go take a leak, and then I put it upside down. Easy. I'm happy to hear you're FaceTiming. Everyone shames me for FaceTiming. Oh, Char- Dano, I FaceTime all the time. 
You're one of the few that I've met who always FaceTime. It's not the FaceTime from you. It's you doing it without a shirt on. No, that's not all the time. It's very infrequently that that it's without a shirt on. I do that to you to to make make you uncomfortable because I think it's funny. I'm not spending, and Skipper occasionally. I want to talk about one thing that I found the most interesting from Brandon Staley last night. Uh, you know how Br- Robert Sala, before the games, does the stairs? Yeah. He looks like someone that gets a pregame workout in. Man. Uh, he, he Brandon Saley him. does. He uh, Brand- get- famously, he does like... Uh, no, no, that's where I wanted. That's where I was going with this. Yeah, the, He's the struggling four? today. Yeah. He's got and a then thing this is what throat. I saw, a video of Brandon Staley before the game. Yeah. If you're looking right oh, here, I was like, this, my right guy there. right here okay. is getting after it before but, the game. But you're saying if yeah. we're looking right here and all you're looking at is something the audience cannot see that is yeah. in preview that you have asked for, that you're now doing your own private show with just Jessica, Billy, Mike, and Tony because it wasn't ready. Well, you as well. But it's him on all fours doing what looks like some sort of yoga. It's called a cat cow. Thrust. Damn. And uh, he's really wake. He's trying the tailbone. Looks like he's trying to wake up the lower back. He's doing that wrong also. And the core. Yeah. yeah. I just did. If you said to me, give me all the head coaches around the league that do this before the game, I didn't have Brandon Staley. Just Belichick. I don't recognize him without the baseball cap. I didn't, that didn't look like Brandon Staley to me because I legitimately don't recognize him unless he's wearing that dirty baseball Solid cap. posture, though. When I saw that, I thought it was Easton Stick. I was looking at my boy getting ready for the game. He had a second half, huh? He was like, doing that just to be stick. seen, right? Like, you could do that in the locker room, in the rare, office, anywhere. The rare team that quits yet still has a good second half because they scored 21 <laughs> points. Um, it was 42 to nothing in the first half. It's total disarray. But if you want the coverage of that team, you could find it on God Bless Football. Hey, it's Mike, and I want to motivate you to make Miller Lite a part of your football watching experience. Here's the pitch. It's got only 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12-ounce serving. With a smooth taste and a crisp, clean finish, you get the taste that you crave without the calories. And, football fans, I can assure you from personal experience, there is no other light beer, not on this wonderful planet of ours, that goes with football quite like Miller Light. Make football time Miller time. No matter what team you're rooting for, there is one thing we can all agree on. Miller Light and football bring us all together. So... I want you to take my advice and make it Miller time all season long. Get Miller Lite delivered right to your door. Visit MillerLite.com slash Dan. Or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Don Lebertard. All the cruise ships go out at like 5 p.m. And like it's like a parade of cruise ships and they're all blowing the horns like... And there's all these people outside because it's like... It really yeah, does. Like, sound, it sounds like an old, an old <laughs> truck. Yeah, I thought it was more like. Oh my god, that's that was a good really one. good. That's that's a good one. One. That was wow. good. Wow. That's a good one. Wait, do it fake, again. Do it again. Limited fake cruise ship horn. Stugats. Mm, oh, really <laughs> good. <laughs> really I'm good. waving to you. I'm waving. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is the Dan Lebatar show with the Stugats. Useless sound from the week. Stugatz, it's never gotten here later. Like I said, it's been a very busy week, and everyone's pinballing <laughs> off of each other. It can't get here any later. There I have mean. been, that's correct. There have been arguments. <laughs> there have been, like, just, there's been merriment. There's been drunkenness. And useless sound has finally arrived from the entirety of the week. We're a hell of a lot closer. Well, we're already in next week because we had the <laughs> Thursday night game. But this is the useless sound from the last batch of football games before the one last night that shouldn't count because one of the teams quit because Stugatz gave Austin Eckler the week off. <laughs> When you're bad in all three phases, that's what happens. You lose the game. Earned the right to play today, and he earned the right to play um, the next week. We knew that today was not a playoff game, but it's going to feel like a playoff game. I just wanted to see us take a step as a football team, you know, because it's about winning. Uh, you want to be playing your best football in December, and I, I think we got off to a great start tonight. We play to win. Our offense does, I think you guys can see it and feel it a little bit. We have the ability to really start to get over the hump. Guys want to win. 
I'm just excited that we won a game today. You know, people gritted through some stuff, and that's what I'm happy about. Players will find a way to step up and make plays, and that's how these games are won, and that's what our guys did. You know, it was two teams going back and forth, you know, um, being able to go toe-to-toe, uh, championship caliber game late in December, and, hey, let's see how we respond. They're players. They made plays, right? They made plays, and we didn't. We didn't execute well enough today. We're in a horse race. You're midway to the third, you know, three quarters of the way through, and you got to finish the last quarter strong. I, I think the best thing that we can do is stay focused on us and playing, you know, our best football. You know, I think that's really key. Let us play the game, and then whatever happens, happens. We can go through all these numbers you want. It was the discipline part of it. The minute we make some hay, we, you know, then we we have a huge penalty that costs us, and and it's too hard to overcome in this environment. If you keep doing right. Uh, it's going to be right. Thought we fought. I can't say enough about these guys fighting, the competitiveness they had coming in here. We get ready for our next opportunity next week. Uh, it's what we all, always do. Obviously, um, this stings, um, but we'll be back. It comes to work every day. You know, we need him to step up and you know carry the mail today, and he did. So, carried the ball, took a lot of plays, took a lot of snaps, short week. You know, we got banged up last week, but, you know, he it was a pro performance today. That's not something that you can do and expect to, um, uh, to win football games. <laughs> We're human. We'll continue to get better from this. This is the NFL. No one's perfect. So, that's that. We're getting better. I mean, we're still right in the hunt there. Everybody that's in that locker room has been through in their lives and has made it to this point. They've made it to this point because of the they've been through. Happy for our, for our team, happy for the coaches. Um, like I said, it was a short week, not much sleep this week, but you know, they put a lot into it, and it's very satisfying to see the, the results that we had today. We're obviously close, um, and, and we just got to keep chopping wood. Forgive me, I didn't hear parts of that because Chris Cody was spending a lot of time yelling in my ear about something, but just let me go around the room real quick. How would all of you, one word from each of you, how would you describe Chris Cody's personality in one word? Tony, you start, please. Incredible. Really? Okay. Uh, Jessica. Gregarious. Okay. Uh, I was going to go jolly, something in the form of jolly. Stall mine. Uh, Mike. Affable. Uh, Billy? Jubilant. Okay, so he's, he's a generally happy person. He gives off good vibes, but this week he is not, and I've got a theory for why that is, but one of the reasons he has not uh, given off good vibes, this is not the chief reason, I don't think. Chief. There is a chief reason. Mm-hmm. Well done. And, but it's not the chiefs. It's a different reason. I think it's the Jets. I think he hasn't been affable because he's legitimately scared of the Jets, and that's not what this season was supposed to be about once Aaron Rodgers went out. So I think he's just projecting all over the place. But he was screaming in my ear when Mahomes when Mahomes' sound came up. He spent the rest of the useless sound montage saying, everyone here, des- I deserve an apology from everyone in here. Did you see that Orlovsky video? And I did. But tell the people still why you're so mad. That, he won't let it go, That Dan. no one in here agrees with you on what happened in that Chiefs game. He was taking everyone out. He was also, when he wasn't screaming at you, he was screaming at the, the TV side about the lighting on the Christmas tree in the shots that they were taking, which is a weird thing for him to be upset about. It's good eye for Great detail. shot. Good lighting on that tree. Yeah. Why don't you take that shot where you see the chair? Do that one next. <laughs> this call really rattled him. I did do that, actually. Look, I didn't even realize what, it. What, what just happened with the Dolphins has been passed down in his family. You have to understand his mother doesn't trust the Dolphins at all and believes that Tennessee game is a symbol for what their December is going to look like. It wasn't supposed to be about fearing Tennessee and the Jets. But tell the people why it is specifically you and what it is you were screaming in my ear because that doesn't happen very often. You guys don't talk to me very much during the show. You were yelling at me. I just don't have any clue how anyone can be on the side of that call being right when Orlovsky shows you multiple times through the game where he's lined up over the line. And I'm not saying we can criticize Criticize Tony. He, hey, don't be lined up off sides. But if they're not going to call it the entire game, we're all okay with them then calling it for the first time on the last play of the game. That's bullshit. That's it. And I don't understand how everybody is still going to do the thing. Like, I'm not saying, I'm what I'm saying is logical. You guys are the ones that's just like, yes, it, it, he should call it there. 
but not the rest of the game. It's bullshit. That's how basketball is called. Uh, things aren't called at the end of the game that were called at the beginning. That's of the, the opposite, game. Yeah, though. Yeah, but this one was called at the end of the game. I'm I just mean. saying I understand <laughs> why everybody would want the refereeing to be consistent. Good luck hoping the rest of your life for humans to be consistent. <laughs> just just don't call it only there. You. So they weren't looking at that the rest of the game. But, Chris, they can call holding on every single play. They say that all the time. They don't do it. It's kind of like in the NBA where LeBron travels every time he touches the basketball, but this time they would call it on like a game-winning shot where he takes like seven steps. That's what it would be like. They called it before the play happens. I- excuse me. Have you watched – you watch the Kansas City Chiefs this year, right? I have. You know what their right tackle gets away with every goddamn play? False start play? every time. Yep. Every play. Every play. In fact, look at that play. Look where Kadarius Tony's lined up. That's where everyone's looking. Look where the right tackle is lined right. up. Don't worry what about it. A they... yard right. off the line right. of scrimmage. That – Right tackle and the Kansas City Chiefs offensive line has been benefiting from serially cheating all season long. How would you feel if they did that the entire game and didn't call it and then called it on the last play? They're at least being what, consistent not calling it. What I don't like is that that team and that quarterback finds this opportunity to complain about the officials when their right tackle all season long has been able to cheat and line up in ways that nobody else has. They've been getting favorable treatment all season long because every play that right tackle lines up in a position he should not be. <laughs> Them getting favorable treatment all year after the last two weeks is insane. Them not getting favorable treatment just because of the last two weeks in your eyes is insane. This has been going on since week one against the Lions where that guy got away with it. Mike, do you like moments? I do like moments. We were stolen. Yes. Of a moment. Yes, but I also Rob like but I also like a public <laughs> because humbling. Because the guy was offside. No. I like a public humbling. <laughs> Mike, I'm and not, I think I you think like Patrick, that more than moments. I think Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs embarrassed themselves with that reaction. And it was outsized and it was misplaced. Well, he apologized. And I get it. Well, it, right. it. Rightfully so. We're still talking about it. I'm not saying it. that his reaction is right or wrong. I'm just saying it's I just don't want that call so there you're, you're when probably, it's not called the whole game. I hey, just, if you call it three times on him throughout the game, you've established, hey. I'm calling this on you. Then, okay, call it. But you, Just, Orlovsky would, I, showed you six or I would seven love plays. For Orlovsky it, to show me the right tackle. Okay, but because they didn't it's been call, going it, on all season long. But at least they're being consistent with that it one. Happened, it happened at least five times that he was offsides before it was called. So your argument is that not the ref being, your should call it not before being, that. No, that's not your argument. Your but, argument was if he got away with it, he should continue. Like my, you don't should just never call, call it. No, I'm saying if you're going to call not, that, call it every he, time. Not, or yes, never call you're, it. you're that's not what mad saying. at him for right. missing the five times. You're mad at him for getting it right the I, one I'm time. Call, no, yes. That's ex- so only. So you're saying you're. So you're saying you're good with him. I'm saying they're not rules. calling it, Chris. Yeah. It's so, like jaywalking. This happened okay? like six days you ago. Do it, are you still you doing do this? it 12 times, and you know, one time a cop might give you a ticket. Okay? 11 times, they let you get it's away like with it. It's like if he gave right? me a ticket on my way to my wedding. Like, right, I've well, jaywalked this street every day for my relationship. And then the yeah, day I'm getting married, you he arrests it. me for it. Yeah, it's but, like, what the f? I've been doing this for six years. Those are the, that's the game. That's is the wild game. That no, that you when guys you are jaywalk, all... when you roll through a stop sign, you exactly. say, you know what? No, right. Tony's good here. You know so what? Wait, sometimes you get a warning. And, so wait, me, Tony, Billy, not let me just Tony. ask you a question. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, are you saying you're okay with the no calls the six previous times in the game? Let's what? not worry about the last player right now. Are you okay with those or those should have been called? No, they should. What I'm saying why is. Why weren't those called? I don't know why they weren't called, but it it's, being called is what you should be mad. Sometimes you ever go to a place <laughs> where you have to pay for parking. And you're like, I'm just going to be five minutes. I, you never pay. Right. Okay. Well, sometimes you go and you're like, I'm going to be here five minutes. It's like $10 an hour. I'm just in and out. Like, exactly. let me risk this. Right. And you do that 20 times. And then eventually you get caught and you're like, Bingo. yeah. Yep. You know what? I had it coming. I did it too many times. Like, but. It averaged out. I'm good. That's I need to cool that's off. That's how I do it all Can over. Can I leave? The, uh, yeah, go ahead. I need to get some water. Yeah, yeah go ahead. That's uh, a common Miami <laughs> thing. You either pay for parking every time or you never pay for it, and you get a ticket maybe like once every third month, and it's like a $30 ticket, and you probably save money by I try to cheat those time. odds by doing it like every third time. You know what I mean? I feel like it's like going for it on fourth know. and one. It's like you have to do it every time or never. Really? Yeah. That's uh, that is how I do it all over all over the beach. I just that's park a, that's wherever a Miami I want. Thing. I never beach pay is a for it. Game. It is a dangerous game. Your and car could be gone. But it costs like eleven dollars an hour to park. <laughs> it it really hurts. And the tickets though. thirty. It, oh, what no. what really hurts is when I get like I'll go I'll go months without getting caught, but then I get three in a I get three in a week and I'm like oh. Right. Uh, but you feel like you know what. 
this one's on me. Like it averaged out. Uh, I it's should still have been. on them though. They shouldn't have been next to my car. Uh, put this on a T-shirt, please, Angel. We were stolen of a moment, and then I mean robbed. Uh, because that was a Tony special there. Put Tony uh, on the T-shirt and also uh, put on the poll, have the Chiefs been getting away with generally, serially cheating all year long so much that they should now be called the Kansas City Cheats? Uh, Let's do a stat of the day off of last night's game, Mike, because uh, last night's game was special. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Start of the day, start of the day, it is the start of the day. Today's stat of the day is brought to you by Venmo. The 63 points were the third most by a team in the Super Bowl era and the second most in NFL history by a team that was shut out in its previous game. One behind the 64 points, the 1934 Philadelphia Eagles scored against the Cincinnati Reds. The big red machine. (laughs) How about that? Next Saturday, Christmas comes early, only on Peacock. Unbelievable! Bills, Chargers, an exclusive NFL game live in primetime. Next Saturday, 7.30 Eastern, exclusively on Peacock. Don Lebatard. I read his lips and it sounded like he was saying, what, you want to f- fight me now? Sp- ah. but, but I'm telling you, if you look, we can play a game right now. The lips look the same on fight you and failure. Watch my lips. Well, I'm going to turn off my mic. No, I just look at one of these two. I like this and I want you guys to tell me Here if I'm go. saying fight you yeah, yeah. or failure. Okay. All right? Yeah, yeah. Stugats. Why are your ideas always so bad for the podcast? It's it's so so bad 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 audio. Big Such swings, Grace. Is this a character you have now? Are you just not to you? Just for the audio. Here we go. Do it again. No. Fight you. Fight that was you. Fight, yeah. Maybe you can't tell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. We got to the bottom of it. <laughs> this is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats. You can always reach the show at Lebatard Show. Juju Gotti runs our social accounts and gets the information I need to me. He sends me here a tweet, Stugatz. Nobody believes the fine bucket was stolen. Hmm. My theory is Dan figured out a way to give bonuses without paying taxes. You don't get the show. The second part's true. (laughs) The first part... Is inaccurate. Right. Um, the fine bucket wasn't s- stolen, the, not the bucket itself. The money was absolutely stolen and has been stolen a couple of times. The important part was stolen. Yeah. Uh, and I forgot, Chris, do you have cash on you? Do you carry any cash? No. Okay, well, you owe Jessica $5 from uh, Flemmy into the mic because Jessica is now getting everything out of the fine bucket, and the next person that picks the fine bucket will get nothing, and we will continue to do it this way because it's not fair that because we have a thief among us, Jessica got, suffered instant death and didn't get any money when I know there was money in there. It's all my money that gets thrown in there because no one else is paying any fine. I'll Venmo her. Anyone can Venmo me if they want, Ooh. also. Yeah. Um, I, we, I'm confused. So how, how would we not pay taxes if you're giving us bonuses? Yeah. Uh, I just that that just didn't make a lot uh, leave of sense. it to me I'm and sorry. my accounting Cash. and and my account I've got you guys met Stuart this week our our you, you know, just pointed at Stu Gotts as if that's like a new character he is. I'm the CFO. Stuart, yeah. <laughs> Stuart Gotts. I don't mean, <laughs> we've got an actual Stuart who handles our finances. I'm picturing Stu Gotts with like glasses on yeah. and he's just like, hello. Well, here's what's funny about that. The reason we need an actual Stuart to handle our finances is because of what that Stuart would be doing if he handled our finances. <laughs> well, it sounds like this Stuart's telling you not to pay taxes, which is not the best advice. Stuart, our actual CFO, just started heckling me because he's a Jets fan. Well, how are you feeling what? right now? Yeah, he did at the, at the office party the other day. I was just what like, it was my first time meeting him. He just started heckling me about the Jets. <laughs> I don't feel good that our CFO is a Jets fan. He's like, you better watch out this Sunday. That's Zach. He's like, oh, now you like Zach Wilson. Well, uh, now are you scared of Zach Wilson? Yes. A little bit. Yeah. 
More than Tim Boyle. <laughs> that, that didn't player age well. Of the week. More strong. Maybe that's <laughs> me being afraid of Tim Boyle might be the most strong anyone's been this season. The thing you should be worried about is the weather this week. Ooh. Yeah, weather's well, bad. I think Kadarius Tony being the first ever fast twitch energy drink player of the week <laughs> might be the most wrong anyone's ever been. Billy's right about the weather though, right? I mean yeah, that, that slows down the offense. Weather then. is weather. Yeah. How scared are you, Chris? I mean, I, I think my 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 fear is more big picture. I, I think the Dolphins are still going to finish the season fine and make the playoffs. I don't think they're going to get the bye. I think they're going to get a first round. I think they'll win the division and get the first round at home. And I think we can if we get one of the crappy Colts teams. I think I, I, the next round is where I'm scared. The, I, the, I've gotten to the point where if it's against the Chiefs, the Ravens, you know those top teams, I'm going to be nervous. I'm excited about it, but definitely a little nervous. The thing that Chris Long was asking me which became a clearer possibility the moment you lose that game that way to Tennessee and stack on top of it, the Dolphins have been one of the most injured teams in the league, and now they're really injured. And that Jets defense is a problem. The thing that becomes complicated around what it is that's happening here now, future of the franchise December is this. Last year, and I saw this on Hard Knocks, man, before that Washington game, did their coach hit? We were eight and three last year, eight and three last year, same as we are, eight and three last year, and then we lost the rest of our games in December. And we all know how that felt. And then they went out and clubbed Washington, and it's like, okay, new season. They're nine and three now. But the problem that you face is this team is broken. And the macro problem, the larger problem, is the question that Chris Long asked me was if you lose in the wild card round, do you pay Tua? And now we are headed into a December where it is possible that a whole lot of questions can make an appearance because the Dolphins are injured. And Tyreek Hill is injured, and you just lost. The, the Jets are injured too, Dan. Oh, it's the Titans. They did were lose in- Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> the Titans were injured too. Right. This was supposed to be the easy part of December. I don't mm-hmm. trust this team in December. They had no cold weather games but one coming up in December, which is usually what trips them up. Now you got a weather game at home. You got a weather game at home and it scares you because defense in the rain and your team's hurt. I just want to remind everyone that Tua is presently the leading passer in the NFL. He's getting paid. Yes. He deserves to be paid, Dan. Yes. He's going to get paid regardless of how this season yeah. turns out. If he gets upset by a tough Browns defense or a tough Steelers defense. If it's the Colts, don't pay him. <laughs> you're going to pay the man. And he, he's answering the, the, the most important question uh, that we've had surrounding him, and it's not really effectiveness. Although, I guess if, you, if he continues to struggle here, and I know they did win one game big in December, but the last few years, he's been a quarterback that's been pulled for Ryan Fitzpatrick. There was that uh, weird Packers game last year where he was awful and people were blaming post-concussive uh, symptoms. If he has another rough December, I think that's a conversation. But the biggest question mark that you had about Tua entering this year was his health, and he's played every game. Yep. You're going to well, pay him off of one season? Right, like you just you just outlined three seasons where he hasn't been the guy that you pay two hundred and some odd million dollars to. Well, no. So now no. one season. The Brian Flores season's no. a wash. Yeah, we so we, so we don't trust the Brian one season. No, I'm uh, two, two. He I, he was really good last year when he wasn't hurt. You also saw what the team looked like when he wasn't in there, and how the team couldn't win a game without him. Wait, well, this is interesting. You guys do not trust Tua because they're nine and four. He's had an MVP type season. What are we doing? Well, I here? think we should. Can we talk about when we say pay him? I don't want him to be the next Joe Burrow. Like if he slots himself in there, that's how this works. Okay, then I don't. I don't think I want to give him best, like highest paid that's quarterback the, in the league. The, the you qu- want to start over? The, no, I think like, I wouldn't. Tua say, okay, I'm the fifth, sixth best guy. Like <laughs> Tua would say that. No, I'm, no, I'm saying he, why would the Dolphins off? Like I don't understand. Where's the line? Like, every quarterback's just going to become the yeah, richest quarterback yes, now. Yeah, Jared Goff was. Yeah. You know who else was? Carson Wentz. Yes, yeah. that's how it works. Okay. GG was. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's a weird it business. <laughs> it, correct, but yeah. that's, why the, that's why Chris Long's asking me the question. You guys dismissed it. No, that's why the question's being asked. He's going to, in order to not make it a question, he's going to have to have the self-awareness that Mike and Jessica just laughed at. No, I'm good being the ninth best paid. That's fine. I'm the ninth best quarterback. That's where I assign my value. He does seem nice enough to say, hey, you know what? 
I'm the fifth best in yeah. the league. Does he does. Wilson He's the kind of nice guy. Enough to right. do that too? <laughs> does Russell? He, I guess he does. Mr. That's Unlimited stupid. seems nice enough. I'm too. the third best producer on the show. I'll take a little bit of a, a cut so you can give Chris more. <laughs> I'll take third. <laughs> they have agents. Are you guys, as Dolphin fans, going to go into full-on panic if you start December losing? To the Titans and the Jets at home before the difficult games not, get here. Not the Jets, but I think the what happened with the Titans game, and I don't know what they did differently defensively, but the Titans are a tire fire of a pass defense this season. Deshaun Watson had everyone convinced he was back when he came back, and he's terrible. Correct. Terrible. Terrible with a clean pocket somehow. But losing that game, Mike, is why this game has so much pressure around it. That, yes. that, that is a real concerning, yep. and what you're saying is accurate. Losing both of those just makes you angrier that you lost to the Titans. That, that Titans performance in seeing the season so far is one of the more inexplicable things I've seen all season. It's one of the, the bigger head scratchers. That and Arizona beating the Cowboys. Jessica, can you please but tell me? But at least me? Arizona was at home. Can you please tell me, uh, because I don't think we milk this for enough, just how much cackling laughter on the way home from the watch party you had? Because you got to experience at a very fun watch party. A lot of people made us feel very good about our show and the loyalty around our show. Uh, We got to celebrate with those people, the Dolphins scoring a couple after a terrible game for three quarters. In the fourth quarter, there was a bouncing energy because the Dolphins scored two quick touchdowns that didn't require Tyreek Hill and Tua. And that game seemed finished because there's no way the Titans are going to, in the last four minutes, score more than they've scored the entire game. They're not going to double their scoring output if they've, oh, ouch, oh, there's Will Levis. Oh, wait, what a minute. DeAndre Hopkins, nobody wanted him. Why is he that far away from Jalen Ramsey? How did that happen? What a throw from Will Levis there. Tight window. Squint. I mean, I was was already home by the time all of this happened. It was just uh, thinking of how... Billy and Lewis and Chris and all the, uh, I guess Tony, even though he's like a Patriots fan, just being surrounded <laughs> by, I, like being in public when your team loses. This happened to me a few months ago. I was out of town for a wedding and I had to watch the Notre Dame Clemson game with people that weren't college yeah. football fans. And they were like, I was in public at a bar and I care a, like way too much about Notre Dame way too much about Notre Dame football and they were losing that entire game like Sam Hartman threw a pick six early it was bad and I was sitting there like my knuckles were turning white from trying to just not let it like scream at these people to stop asking me questions about Notre Dame and Clemson and the roster and Sam Hartman all this stuff well, I'm just sitting there like I'm seething being in public when your team loses and not losing it yeah. is very difficult and I just imagine Chris sitting there yeah. like trying to play it off like <laughs> This is no big deal. Like I'm, I'm Chris Cody. Yeah. I'm laughing this off. This is all, this is all fun. Ha ha. But then actually driving home and being like, aren't you a Clemson fan? <laughs> it was a great win for Clemson, and I felt great afterwards. <laughs> great stretch in November for Clemson, finishing five and one, beating Notre Dame, beating their rival South Carolina after losing last year. Big bowl game coming up. Chris Cody, Kentucky. Your family. Go Tigers. Has passed down love of the Dolphins over the years to their kids. Are you willing, because your family is not a family that I imagine does a lot of therapy. Your father's not terribly introspective. Your mother is very busy. She doesn't have time for these things. She's raising three kids, two of them adults, (laughs) the other one, Greg Cody. And I believe that you've been projecting all week that the affable Chris Cody, I believe that you have some sort of virus inside of you that is new. It's not, it's kind of like the coronavirus in that you haven't feared the Jets before. You didn't think this season without Aaron Rodgers was going to be the one that had fearing of the Jets in it. You've never in your life feared the Jets. If you're right, I have no, I'm not aware of it. That's how it works. Blind spots in therapy. You learn about yourself. I'm not saying you're wrong. As far as I'm just mad at everybody about the Chiefs thing, that's in my mind, that's all it is. Let it go, man. Are you afraid of the Jets for real? <sighs> this game. 
This You're game. afraid of this game? This game. I'm just, no you shouldn't be, I think, Chris. I think what I said before is what I actually feel. It's, I think I'm afraid of the big picture. I don't think I'm, af- all right, I'm afraid of the Jets. You could be afraid of their defense. You could be afraid that it's going to be really bad weather and anything Quentin can Williams, happen. But Sauce Gardner. Did you see the last four minutes you saw played? Like, that can lose to the Jets. Like, what are you doing? Zach Wilson's got a big arm. I wouldn't fear Boyle in this situation. I don't know what I think. <laughs> it's just fear and blind spots for you. Hey, it's Mike, and I want to motivate you to make Miller Lite a part of your football watching experience. Here's the pitch. It's got only 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12-ounce serving. With a smooth taste and a crisp, clean finish, you get the taste that you crave without the calories. And football fans, I can assure you from personal experience, there is no other light beer not on this wonderful planet of ours, that goes with football quite like Miller Lite. Make football time Miller time. No matter what team you're rooting for, there is one thing we can all agree on. Miller Lite and football bring us all together. So, I want you to take my advice and make it Miller time all season long. Get Miller Lite delivered right to your door. Visit MillerLite.com Dan, or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces.